All right. Well, wonderful Wednesday. We're used to saying uh, happy Friday, but we want to thank you for an extra dose of education. Today, we're going to be talking about managing a virtual team. Uh, my name is Michelle Maud, and I've actually been working at home. Uh, Inspiring Solutions has been a home-based business since 1991. And for the last 30, almost 30 years, we have been providing online, on-site uh, organizational development through strategic planning, leadership development, and employee engagement. And more recently, we have been delivering online education to a new virtual workplace. So the purpose of our webinars has been uh, on a monthly basis to provide some motivation to our uh, clients, to past participants of workshops, conferences, and to expose you or introduce you to our inspiring programs and our products. This particular program is new. Uh, it came as a result of our attempts to help a new virtual workplace. And we're going to help you today establish and maintain uh, productivity and connectivity with your virtual team, uh, help you as a leader develop uh, and utilize skills of both empowering and of trust, and finally, uh, share with you some best practices to communicate and motivate your coworkers, even if you don't have that face-to-face -face connection. Uh, the handouts that were included in the confirmation and as well as the Zoom instructions included uh, three things, uh, worksheets that we want to uh, refer to this half hour, things you can take notes and actually use uh, afterwards, and then this morning, we want to make sure that there were two others that we wanted you to have. One is a program description so that if this is something that you want to bring to your organization, uh, we are only going to do 30 minutes today, but we can do a hour, uh, 45 minutes of content, and then some Q&A uh, with your organization. And then finally, uh, I found a fun tool that I thought you might enjoy using with your team uh, called a remote work bingo. At the end, please take a little bit of time and answer some questions that we've built into an evaluation, which offers uh, comments, suggestions. Uh, I, wanna, I just loaded some more slides with some questions that you might want for icebreakers. Uh, this is being recorded. And then if you go out to our website, inspiringsolutions.com, go to our webinar page. You can not only register for upcoming webinars, but you will see a uh, link to our pre-recorded uh, webinars that has a, all kinds of good education that you can pass along to your use as well as to your team. It's hard to believe that over four weeks ago, our world was disrupted and every organization has been and continues to be impacted. Uh, I'm dating a doctor and uh, he had an early morning meeting that said, that their organization is now taking a reduction uh, in pay as well as some furloughs. So I read an article from Gallup and the statistics are staggering. 81% feel as though they have been disrupted uh, and feel it's a great, it's a big deal. 40% um, of organizations have now uh, installed a hiring freeze. Uh, as I mentioned, 33% of businesses are um, having layoffs and or furloughs. Furloughs at least keep people uh, able to receive uh, benefits. 61% uh, of you are working home from the, for the first time. And 100% of those that are working home say that they have kids now that are home for school. And I do think we're from Des Moines and I do think uh, that many of the schools in the state of Iowa have completely called off school, but are providing kids online education. So what does that mean? It means that we now are working virtually and that's creating a new group of challenges uh, in today's workplace. So the question that you were asked were to understand what kind of team you are managing. And let me make sure that you are all seeing that. So first of all, the question was, how many people do you virtually manage? whether it is as a supervisor or as a project leader. 17% uh, say that you are coming for your own use as a leader. 
uh, one to five, uh, 67%. So that seems to be the most popular group or size. And then 17% uh, have as many as six to 12 people that they manage. So that gives me an idea that many of you are responsible for leading others. So let's move on now to what that means. How many of you have ever read, or there's a little video you can watch out on YouTube about the best-selling book, Who Moved My Cheese? And I really think that that describes how organizations have reacted. Uh, the characters in the Who Moved My Cheese uh, there's two that are called him and haw, and they kind of sat around and wondered, oh gosh, oh, woe is me, who moved my cheese, and they kept bumping into the maze, feeling helpless, whereas there were other two mice named Sniff and Scurry that put on their tennis shoes and decided all of a sudden that they needed to make some change. Their cheese is gone, so what are they going to do? So what kind of ways have you, as the leader, and in what ways has your organization responded? John Masbich made another uh, great quote from the book, Megatrends. In times of great change, which we are in now, we are in the most need of creativity and innovation. Uh, I've been saying to Dana that we at Inspiring Solutions have been building the plane as it's taking off. Very quickly did we change up our webinar schedule and created three new uh, webinar programs that can help the virtual workplace. So in your handout, uh, and anytime you see in the upper right-hand corner of my slide, you can refer to a page in the handout packet that we gave you. What I wanna do is talk about some basic skills for collaborative leadership. However, I've put a spin on the virtual application. So virtual leadership is one in which you seek out and use the talents of others. And I'm sorry that I'm hearing my dog barking uh, they're supposed to be in a soundproof studio, but that's not working today. Uh, they tend to nurture people's growth and development, and they focus on effectiveness with people and efficiency with things. Collaborative leaders that are working in a with a virtual team tend to appreciate others' ideas, creativity, and willingness to try new things. In fact, you know, at the end of yesterday, I was thanking Dana for really mastering uh, the use of Zoom as our technology. Uh, they challenge the status quo. We can't. Uh, it's no longer the way things used to be. They express the confidence in others. You know, Dana and I have tried to stay in our lane, each crafting our own skills and new techniques. Uh, they create a, a climate where it's okay to make honest mistakes. And I'm going to be transparent with you. I'm, if I let out, I have two dogs, if I let out one lab, things will be okay. So excuse me for just one moment. Okay, sorry about that. But they test their own ideas with others and involve others in the decision making. You know, you probably have, are doing that already, but now more and more, is it important to help people feel like they're a part of change? It helps give them stability. Uh, and then delegate with trust. And the reason that trust is so important is that you no longer can make the rounds by checking in on people at their desks or their workstations and provide helpful uh, feedback and reward desired behavior. Now, some of this might be some of the basics, but I wanna add a big shout out to your importance of being a creative leader. Uh, how many of you have now taken a look at how you can collaborate um, virtually? So if you take a look at what it takes to be creative and collaborative, you need to, first of all, as the manager or the leader, define expectations. And that may or may not have changed, you know, but with that, you also need to make sure that you engage your employees. Now, many of you have learned that you can be creative with your communication by using your iPhone. Uh, I like the feature that allows you to just simply add a caller so you can talk. Uh, and this is appropriate if you don't wanna see each other. However, there is a great way uh, to allow people to see each other if they also have an iPhone. I would never do this without giving them a heads up, um, but you can FaceTime a couple folks at the same time. Many of you might use Skype for business, and I'll encourage you if you wanna add in the chat box any uh, application that you have used. Oh, and again, if your organization has an IT department, 
they probably have some restrictions. So you want to make sure that you get that cleared with them because there might be some limitations. Another is this platform that we've been using. Uh, Zoom allows you for free to have up to 45 minutes uh, of a conference, allowing people to not only hear each other, but to see each other. And we've got you today blocked uh, for both audio and visual uh, purposes. However, uh, yesterday and again today, Dana and I are attending our first virtual conference. It was supposed to be uh, in San Antonio, but now they've done it uh, for the first time as a virtual conference. And yesterday they they reported that they had 2,000 worldwide attendees. And, and the platform was really neat. You probably can't see the screen. I took a picture. But at the top, the agenda for the, I think it was like a, it was a self-paced. They had a live opening and then they had a live closing. But in the meantime, there were three modules uh, that each had pre-recorded content from the keynote uh, and other speakers. So it was it was a neat way and we could also uh, type in comments or questions that they answered at the end. Uh, how many of you are familiar with Microsoft Teams? I will admit that it's within our suite. Uh, we use Office 365. I would like to learn more about it. Uh, I just basically know enough to indicate that it's a platform that you can use to share documents while having online meetings. And then yesterday, I was just introduced to another tool called Customer Vision. Uh, if you want more information, their website is listed there, customervision.net. And from what I was at least exposed to yesterday, uh, it's a great way to have access to content as an internet, intranet, and even an extranet, uh, depending on the size of your organization. It works for all size of organizations. So that being kind of a foundation, I want to now dig into our uh, research. Uh, we've used a tool called Work Expectations that looked at 10 job factors affecting employees' satisfaction or involvement. And I modified the 10 factors, taking out diversity and career growth and replacing them uh, with expression. So I wanted to give you a chance to experience it when you registered, you were asked to identify what were the top three most important, or actually you, you rank those, sorry about that, you rank those in order of importance. And based on the 60 that registered for today's webinar, uh, you identified teamwork as the top or the most important, and second, a balance, uh, which is probably no surprise because if you're working from home, there might not be a clear delineation of the eight to five workplace. In fact, if you're interested, one of the first workshops we did was strategies for working from home. And we talked about uh, how can you have uh, traditional routines. What was interesting is recognition was least. Now, when I have done the 10 job factors before, I can tell you, 100% of the time, recognition was usually in the top three, but you didn't uh, rank it as most important, nor did you think that that was something that would matter most to your employees. So you also felt that employees would see teamwork as being the most important, along with direction, which again speaks to the importance that you have as their leader. They need direction from you. They need to feel like they are doing what they are supposed to do. And given how unstable today's workplace is, it's no surprise that you would think that stability would be number three. You thought recognition would be fifth. Now, we've done this for a couple of other clients last week. And, and when the results came in, my research gave me a ha. I went back to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. If you're familiar with that, uh, it, it's basically a pyramid that indicates that unless you have the baseline met, you're not going to need, you won't feel the need to have the next level. So in other words, unless your psychological needs, your basic air, water, food, shelter are covered, you're going to need move on to having the need for security, uh, employment, uh, love and belonging. So how many of you have felt as though you've kind of gone back to some basics? 
So in other words, what we want you to do is first and foremost, take care of yourself. As a leader, if you have people that need you for direction, uh, employment, you need to make sure that you're taking care of yourself. If you have kids, uh, you gotta make sure that you take care of yourself so that you can take care of them as a provider uh, or maybe as a parent. And then finally, what does this mean to you at work? Uh, it really is going to be a test of your organization's culture. Did you have in place a culture or an infrastructure that supports solid communication? Luckily, uh, Inspiring Solutions of a couple years back uh, went with an online or a cloud-based communication, which allowed both Dana and I to now work virtually. So on another page, uh, I'm going to give you a tool. Uh, it's set up basically for you to use like we did with a registration. Uh, you could basically take it and use it with your team, asking on the left-hand column your employees to rank those eight job factors in order of importance, one being the most important down to the least, and then ask them uh, to share with you, and you could tabulate the results just like Dana did for our use today. And then you could discuss it at an upcoming team meeting. And what's neat to know is why might they rank those differently than you? Uh, and what is your team telling you? The other piece that I think is valuable is not to guess. Uh, in what ways then could you or are you providing that that factor allowing your employees to feel satisfied. So as a leader, one of the principles that I feel is that you don't have to try to come up with ways of motivating your employees because there's not a silver bullet, not one way of managing or motivating, uh, recognizing each employee. Everyone has a different meaning, just as you would today. So the next page, what, what I'm gonna do with our time remaining is give you some best practices. And I'll encourage you to uh, use these to keep your employees connected and feeling productive. And I've given you a definition that at least you can work from for each of those job factors written from an employee perspective. So the first factor is autonomy. Now employees want you to trust them and allow them to use their knowledge, skills, and ideas. You know, people want to feel like they're making a contribution. So to help you understand this, I want to introduce you to the five behaviors of a cohesive team. We've used this with teams on site, but we can also use it virtually to help build uh, five behaviors for a team to work. First and foremost, it is on trust. Uh, this is a, a model based on Patrick Lincioni's five dysfunctions of a team. And unless you have trust, you can't resolve conflict. And unless you're willing to talk and have productive conflict, can you earn commitment from each team member? And when you have that, then you have shared accountability, all of which leads to appropriate results. So what I want to do is build upon a vulnerability-based trust and add a virtual spin to it, which means without visual supervision, leaders must demonstrate a hands-off approach. Now, to some, based on your style of leader, that might be very difficult for you because you don't know what that employee is doing. So both leaders and teams must get comfortable being vulnerable with one another. Uh, as you just saw with dealing with my dog, I tend to be pretty transparent. Uh, it's probably the easiest for me. Uh, it's probably the most genuine. And when I do that, I find that people tend to trust me. Other words uh, for vulnerable means helpless, defensiveless, or defense, defenseless, powerless, weak, and susceptible. And boy, don't those words describe the state that we are all in right now. So in normal situations, autonomy means that make an assignment to an employee or a team member and trust that they're gonna do their best to get it done. And today in a virtual environment, 
you need to recognize that trust that good employees are going to be good employees at home. On the other side, if you have a low performer, you have somebody who tends to not do what you expect them to do, or they might not be the most productive, you're going to need to probably even do more to manage that employee. Uh, we have, as a result of going through the five behaviors of a cohesive team, we've created our team's promise. And that's something as a result of the experience that teams do. And these are the six promises that Dana and I have made uh, to one another. And these are even more and more important as we work virtually together. The second factor is balance. And that was one of the two that you felt would be most important for you which means you want support and respect for both personal and professional priorities. What that might mean in normal circumstances is that I have a life beyond work and I want time to enjoy it. Well, that might have a blended application now when you've got kids or other spouses that are working, not other spouses, but another person working from home. And what we're finding is that people are truly taking a genuine interest and concern for how people are doing. You know, you used to ask the question, how are you doing, kind of in flippant or in passing, but now it has a much more empathetic approach. How's your family doing? And uh, we're finding that kids are really taking uh, the situation and are really concerned about what's going on with mom and dad. Uh, just this morning, uh, I added these questions and if you'd like uh, fill out the evaluation and we'll be happy to uh, write those or if you want to take your camera and take a picture of these. These are 11 questions that you can ask to maintain team cohesion by asking how are you taking care of yourself today? You know, what's the story, uh, a movie, an article uh, that you've gripped uh, by recently? You know, like I said, the, um, there's some great old books that you could read who moved my cheese? Or what habit have you started or broken during the quarantine? Uh, one of my uh, friends says that she walks to work, which her commute time is less, and she's just simply walking down the hallway, downstairs into her office, but that's kind of her new mindset. Some other empathetic questions you can ask. Uh, what's the easiest part about quarantine? Well, from a cop's perspective, uh, whole, the whole tank of gas lasts a lot longer than it used to. In fact, in Des Moines, I saw gas over the weekend as low as 99% at Casey's in Ankeny, if anyone's nearby. So these are just other ways that you can really show empathy towards your employees because stress is at its all-time highest. Uh, direction. Uh, by direction, it means give me clear and consistent communication and feedback. And you felt as though that was one of the top three needs of your team. So in normal circumstances, that means explain what I need to do. Make sure that my job description is current. In fact, this morning when I was listening to the news, they were talking about the all duties as a and other duties as a sign. That has a new meaning because in some cases, your job description, your performance review has completely uh, been or needs to be revamped. So what that means in a virtual setting is keeping them informed, probably more frequently than past. Maybe you now are having more one-on-ones. You know, Dana and I, there's not been a day gone by that Dana and I haven't actually talked. We used to just text each other when I'm on the road, but now we're doing much more one-on-ones, if not weekly. We have a weekly chat, but we've been doing it daily. Uh, here is a model of what I'd refer to as a synergistic meeting agenda. Uh, the first couple uh, pieces are standard. Icebreaker, uh, preview, the agenda, if there's anything else that needs to be added to it. Uh, the next part is where the meat of the agenda are. And these three questions can be standard. It gets everybody involved in reporting out. What have you done since our last meeting? What are you currently working on? And then you ask literally for other people to chime in how they could help you. And then the last two pieces are the wrap up. You know, confirm the next connection, set a date. When you've got people on the call or on the line, make sure you've got that 
time and date set, and then uh, close with something like share three words that would describe your takeaways. Now I'm going to give you a variety of different fun icebreakers towards the end. So don't leave if we happen to run over. Uh, the fourth factor, our environment. You know, this has a couple of different meanings. One is how do you feel physically? Uh, and then secondly, how do you feel socially? And, and that really is times 10 when it's virtual. Uh, many of you probably have standards of behavior or you have a policy that indicates what are some of your values, integrity, compassion, accountability, respect, excellence. And those are probably what I talk about the infrastructure those are things that are really going to talk through and get you through this turbulence. Uh, one of our clients out in Oregon, Good Shepherd, took it one step further. And what they created for each of the values are behavior statements. And that really resonates well in this time of great instability. Uh, from a working perspective, make your space your space. Uh, when I did the working from home program. And if you're interested, we'd be happy to do this for your organization. Uh, we've got it described out on our website. Make it your space, whether it's a spare bedroom, a dining room table, basement area, make sure that you've got adequate equipment, your phone. Uh, maybe you don't have a printer, but you can use a scanning app. Try not to share resources with your spouse or kids. Uh, we uh, have a work, working setup. Uh, this is actually the office that's in my home. So when Dana is working in my office or Inspiring Solutions office, we have that in our utility room complete with a beach because it doesn't have any windows in our, uh, uh, gosh, what am I thinking of? Our intern, Sarah, found a mural and it not only has a window, but it has a beach to it. Uh, this is Dana's space, although she sent me a, a picture yesterday she now has changed up uh, her office to a spare bedroom, but this was her space at once in her kitchen, complete with a bar. Uh, the fifth factor is recognition, and as I mentioned, this typically is on the top uh, three, but I do believe that people do still need that appreciation for good work. In normal circumstances, you know, saying thank you, uh, celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, work anniversaries are important, awards, celebrations, I think those are all extremely important. However, you might just want to do them differently. Maybe instead of saying it, you mail a card, birthday. Um, maybe you have a virtual coffee, uh, B-Y-O-B, or bring your own coffee or tea. Um, we did a virtual uh, birthday parade over the weekend for a, a friend. And there's also a neat app called Group Greeting eCard, where you can actually ask a team to write a personal meeting to a card that you mail to someone. Uh, last week, I think it was, uh, Dana celebrated her fourth anniversary working with Inspiring Solutions. So I loaded up my two dogs who were in the background together with tambourine and a couple gifts and surprised Dana. So have some fun with your celebrations. Uh, number six is stability. Uh, stability means to keep people informed, especially in times of great change and uncertainty. You know, who knows how long this is going to be, but we do want to make sure in normal circumstances, we keep people involved in the change, explain the why, why are we making changes to policies, procedures, and frequent communication. What does that mean now? Well, all of the same times 10, which means that it's even more important to have consistent communication. If you have, or maybe you were thinking about doing a newsletter letter, make sure that you do that. People need that communication. Uh, structure is the next piece where it talks about having the adequate tools and technology to do the job. Uh, in other words, in what ways are you keeping uh, and probably needing to revamp your handbook. Training and development. We have found our clients that we claim to be learning organizations, those that have really prioritized the importance of talent development, have embraced these webinars and feel as though it's a great way to keep people feeling valued and giving them tools and a sense of stability. So routine and intentional communications are important. 
uh, being intentional means doing things on purpose. It's planned. It's premeditated. Things like in basketball, an intentional foul because you want to stop the clock. Uh, in baseball, they intentionally walk a batter because you don't want them to hit a home run or move uh, runners around the base. You might be familiar with intentional living. Well, what we want you to be is an intentional leader. Now, there's a whole program about that. But today, I want you to think about a leader is someone who proactively controls resources, and sometimes they're limited, and mitigates undesired factors to produce desired outcomes. So you still have to deliver your product or your service, but you've got to figure out how to do it by replicating practices in a creative manner through Zoom, uh, Facebook, and maybe even daily chats. And then finally, the last, uh, and again, the biggest, and what you thought was the most important, is teamwork. Uh, this means that you need to promote collaboration and cooperation even more. In normal circumstances, that means you've got to have a clear vision. Now, we can't truly predict what the new normal will look like, but I think if you have the approach that you're going to involve the team in giving them a voice with a solid strategy, uh, keeping them involved and celebrating what we've learned and done along the way. Uh, and then I want to add flexibility. You know, we can't rely on old practices in the new normal. We have to be creative and continue to promote that creativity along with some consistency. And then we'll eventually be able to come up with some new normals. So when you have virtual team meetings, I want to give you some resources. Uh, first of all, in our local news channel, they're doing a program each morning called Tell Me Something Good. So make that as an icebreaker. Uh, show and tell. You know, I uh, oftentimes like to have uh, people show what's in their, their home. It's a great way to kind of get to know from a personal side. Uh, do a uh, tell a technique. So many of you, I think, in the chat box have offered some of your favorite apps or techniques that have worked for you in the workplace. Um, last Friday, uh, my group of silly girlfriends and their guys uh, had a hat theme virtual happy hour. Every uh, Friday at 5 or 6 o'clock, we get together and everybody was to wear a hat that had a story or had a meaning. Um, bring your pet to work, as you heard I do. Uh, and because they're going to be around, it's a great way to get to know your pets. And then, uh, like I said, I found some other uh, meeting icebreakers that you could use uh, just as topics to start a meeting. Uh, what's something that you miss? What is it that you don't miss during this process? Uh, what was the last thing that you experienced that made you laugh or cry or dance? Last night we were talking about they did a tribute to Prince and we were clanging on the pots and pans. Uh, other fun icebreakers, um, what's giving you hope right now? You know, I really do believe there's gonna be some silver lining in this process. I've connected more with my cousins and my brothers, my niece and my nephews more uh, over this last month than I have in the past, and I hope truly that that continues. Uh, this was one of my show and tells. I was cleaning out a closet, and uh, my grandfather was a farmer and found his a journal that had an ad from Farmers Mutual Hale Insurance, one of our clients. And so I thought that that was kind of a fun uh, show and tell from 1924. And then the other handout that we gave to you this morning included a fun work bingo. Uh, this could be something that you use at the next meeting. You send it out to everyone. And as they introduce themselves or go around and have everybody report out, uh, you can have someone say, well, I did that one. So you could mark it off and then silently mark some of the other boxes when you hear uh, anyone say one of those comments on the box. And then when anyone fills a row or if you wanted to do a blackout, uh, you can make it last over a couple of meetings. Shout bingo. So like I said, perhaps one of the ways that we benefit from this uh, COVID-19 is that happiness is the new rich. Inner peace is the new success. Health is the new wealth. We can't take it for granted. And kindness is the new cool. 
Uh, if you've enjoyed this, and I know I apologize for running over, uh, bring this to other leaders in your workplace. And uh, we can do it as a 60 minute or a 90 minute webinar uh, for your uh, other leaders. We want you to join us uh, at next month. We've got a great workshop uh, planned with two guest speakers. We do it again from 9, 10, and 11 for 30 minutes, May 15th on managing transitions to make the most of change. It isn't that timely. And then our last scheduled uh, is June, uh, Visionary Leadership Strategies. However, we might be doing some other ones just because we've got the time and obviously we've got the need out there. We also would encourage you to take advantage of this free Wiley. Uh, Wiley is the producers of Everything Disc, and they're offering a free showcase from 11 to 12 o'clock once a month to develop uh, your agility. Uh, we rolled out a new profile called um, Agility EQ, which measures your emotional intelligence, which we find is so very important. So in closing, we uh, want your feedback. This is, this is new. We're all building the plane as it's taking off. So please give us your feedback. What are your needs? How can we help you uh, both on-site or in the interim online? And thank Dana for uh, helping technology work for all of us today. And from both of us, please stay home and stay healthy. Thank you. Make it a great day for yourself and others.